So, uh, so let me recall the uh, the results of, of yesterday. So, uh, the, so given an open, smooth, bounded subset of R n, we we found that. Uh, um, Maybe our notation was this minus the signs were yes correct minus u of y d x y Okay, this was the result of yesterday for a function u in C in C two intersection C one of the closure. And G was called the Green's function. G was the green function associated to the open set omega and to the operator Laplace, minus Laplace. Okay, this was the result of yesterday. Okay, for today we would like to compute the um, the case of the sphere, so omega, so assume just for simplicity that n is larger or equal than 3. Assume that omega is the ball of radius, let me check, r, centered at the origin. And we want to find essentially the, um, the, the green function. So, and the idea as I told you yesterday, was to, to claim that uh, so this is the uh, fundamental solution. So for any x and y in our n, um, for any x different than y, uh, uh, the, the, uh, this is the, the fundamental solution of the Laplacian, and then there may be some constant uh, alpha, yes, alpha, alpha, uh, phi of x star y was claim. Claim we look for we look for g of the following form. Okay, this is just a claim. And <clears throat> alpha to be chosen, alpha to be chosen so that g of x, y, if x is in omega, g of x, y equal to 0. Okay, so alpha um, must be chosen. Okay, <clears throat> so now our domain is the sphere. So let me make the picture of yesterday. So zero, then there is some x here. So x is different now from the origin. X star, let me remember that X star is along X. <coughs> this maybe was X star. X star. Was along X and then was, was this the definition? Huh? The definition of x star. So given any x different from the origin inside the omega, this is the ball of radius r, uh, br, I define x star as a function of x. Therefore, this function actually is a function of x and y because x star depends on x. X is different from the origin, 
And, uh, and now we see that, uh, now if I take any point y, yesterday y was here more or less, any point y on the boundary, different maybe take y not a line on this line, and consider, and consider the following triangles. Okay, so one check, so this, this angle, so let, let us consider the triangle O, X, Y, and the triangle O, X star, Y. Okay, then thanks to this relation, so they have the, a common angle, okay? And then they have also the same angles. And this angle is equal to this. Okay. Um, so this is R. Okay. From here, you see that uh, x star divided by r is equal to r divided by uh, x, namely x, x star, x star is equal to r squared from this relation, just keep the norm of this vector, the norm of this, so there is a cancellation between one power and one power, and therefore the norm of this divided by r is equal to r divided by x. So this says that uh, uh, this divided by this, uh, so this This divided by this is equal to this divided by R itself uh, by X star. So you see, if you consider this angle, then you take the quotient of this huh, divided by this, sorry, by, sorry, divided by this. So consider this angle, take the quotient of this divided by this. Hmm? So r divided by x star, consider r divided by x star, for instance. So this divided by this. Then consider this angle. And is, this is equal to, by this relation, is equal to this divided by this. X divided by R. OK? So you, therefore, these two, uh, so these two, um, the adjacent uh, edges to the common angle are proportional. This means that. Uh, uh, these three angles have the same angle. Hmm? Everything is consequence of this definition. Okay. Okay. Uh, therefore, now consider the following quotient R divided by x star minus y, r divided x star minus y, yes. So now this divided by this uh, 
must be equal hmm? this divided by this now must be equal to this divided by this, right? Hmm? Okay. Uh, so that R divided by X must be equal to x star minus y divided by x minus y. Okay. Okay. So now let me go back to this. What is this? This is equal to 1 divided by n, n minus 2 omega n. 1 divided by x minus y to the n minus 2 because now the, Newton, Newton, the fundamental solution is we are in three dimensions or more <coughs> minus alpha divided by x star minus y divided by n minus to the power n minus 2 okay uh, of course, yesterday we already observed, sorry, uh, remember that this is trivial. I mean, x in omega uh, and x star is outside omega, say. Okay. <coughs> hmm? Okay, now, for which choice of alpha, huh, now we realize from this relation here, we realize that if we put now alpha equal, so if I choose alpha equal r divided by x, to the power n minus 2, what happens? Well, it happens that, um, let me, it happens that, okay, n, n minus 2 omega n, 1 over x minus y minus 2. So this is the expression of g. Two. And we see that if now I just substitute this quantity with that, there is a cancellation of this denominator with that the numerator there. Therefore, this is exactly equal to zero. When y is on the boundary, y is on the boundary. You see? By construction, now y is on the boundary. And see, I simply substitute this with this. Then there is a cancellation of this against this. And what remains is exactly this denominator to the correct power, n minus 2, which cancels with this. Hmm? So OK, when y is on the boundary, we have that this is satisfied. So, uh, so let, let me. <clears throat> so at the end, this is the green function for the sphere. So maybe I should. I keep this. I have to keep something because otherwise. Okay. 
OK, so now assume that we want to solve, assume, want to solve the following problem. Laplace of u equal to 0 in dr, and u equal, which is the notation that I use, g on the boundary, g on the boundary of br. So for simplicity, <coughs> I take just uh, zero the right hand side to take to, to be to, to keep the, the discussion more simple okay so now assume that I want to solve this and so we have a candidate for solving this okay candidate and this is in the, in the direction of answering a question of yesterday so now let me remember that we have this, this uh, representation formula for any function u with the, the proper smoothness. OK, so the candidate now is the following. g, we know who is g. And we know that this g is 0 on the, when, when y is on the boundary. Therefore, this is not present. <coughs> we also want to solve harmonic function inside. So this Laplacian is 0. And therefore, the candidate is the following. For any x in omega, our candidate solution is the following. Minus u of y dg over d nu x, y, and minus y. Yes, OK. Well, there are, it does, doesn't matter. I think that uh, um, um, it doesn't matter because at the end, this function is smooth also at x. Because you see, uh, y is on the boundary. If x is the center. But what about this? Are the values uh, normals? How can we take this uh, normal vector and cut it at z uh, Yes, yes. Yes, yes, on the big, yes, sure. Because otherwise, this goes at, uh, at infinity. But this function here, I believe, is smooth also at the origin. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Because Without substitute x, this term is the original one. Of course. So uh, you, you, can, you, you, don't, you don't see any, any, any singularity there. And therefore, now the point, which is the point? So this is a candidate. We don't know if it is a solution. I mean, if the solution exists, it is necessarily this. We have to show that this is a solution, right? So, uh, if it, so if it solves, if it is the solution, if it is a solution, it is the solution. Because we already know uniqueness. OK? So what do we have to do? Well, we have to show that the Laplace of this is 0. We have to show that 2 is smooth enough. We have to show that it takes the boundary condition. OK? 
Okay. So, so now this I don't need anymore. I have my candidate and the the pardon the what does it mean? No, it's not u by but g by t in your class. Inside the integral. Ah yes, excuse me. Thank you. Yes. Yes, sure. Yes, of course. We we must have something on the right hand side, u there is there is not any more u, of course. Only the data of the problem. So the boundary datum and uh, something with the, which depends on omega. Okay? Of course. Thank you. Um Maybe one comment before continuing. You should, at home, try to make the same picture that we have made, but changing uh, the problem as follows. Assume now, today we will work on this, but assume that we want, on the other hand, solve it. And so this is called the Dirichlet. Okay, this is called Dirichlet boundary condition. boundary condition. Okay, so the question is a little bit vague, but you should try to think a little bit about it. So the question is, uh, what happens to this picture that we have considered up to now, when instead of, one, instead of uh, considering the Dirichlet problem on the sphere, you consider the so-called Neumann problem. So the Neumann problem is different, it is this. This is so-called Neumann boundary condition. So you should try to, to redo, to do once more the same reasoning, uh, but uh, with this new kind of boundary condition. Okay, so, but for today, we confine ourselves to the Dirichlet. So, u equal to g to g on the boundary. Okay. Okay, so now the point is, first of all, to compute this derivative here. This derivative here So the idea is to write this expression in a more transparent way, computing directly this derivative. So let us try to do the computation without <laughs> hoping make mistakes. Uh, so now I have to erase this, cancel everything. In order to find the famous Poisson formula. So now the point is to compute dg over dn on the boundary of omega. OK, so this is G. So let us go slowly. First of all, we have that x minus y, y squared is equal to x squared plus y squared minus 2xy. So let me indicate the note by gamma the angles the angle between the vector x and y. So maybe in the picture it is better to have it once more. So okay, this is x, this is y, and this is x star. Okay. 
So this is gamma. This is gamma. Therefore, uh, what is this? That is equal to the gradient with respect to y of g scalar product with nu. Okay, I don't remember if the scalar product is a dot or what else. No, it's the dot scalar product with nu. Okay, so I have to compute now the uh, gradient of x minus y hmm? with respect to y. And so what is this? It is this times what? Uh, times uh, y, y, 2y minus 2 x y over y cosines okay so it is equal to y minus x y over y m minus y. Please, if I make a mistake, uh, so now um, so, uh, so this is this, huh, you see. And so uh, I hope it's correct. Eh? Um, then I have to take, by the way, the gradient of this. Okay, so the gradient of 1 divided by x minus y to the n minus 2. What is this? This is minus n minus 2, x minus y to the n minus 1. And then there is the gradient. Sorry, I go slowly because I, I, I don't, uh, OK. So it is this. And therefore, this is equal to minus n minus 2 divided by x minus y to the power n. And then I have multiplied by y minus x, y divided by y, cos gamma. So, OK. Please check. Okay, so now I have to take the, sc the scalar product of this with y, scalar product of this with this, which is the outward unit normal, okay? So the scalar product, so, is equal is equal. And then I want to compute this, of course, on the, on the uh, boundary of the sphere. But anyway, this is equal to minus n minus 2 divided by x minus y to the power n. And then I find multiplied by y minus x y okay let me check if I am correct <sighs> now there is a mistake here the mistake is that uh, 
Yes, there is a mistake. When I take the scalar product of, of this with this, this is one. Sorry. This is not present. OK, so this is not. OK. This concerns, uh, sorry, there is also the constant here. Uh, multi this is minus and then multiplied by, so there is a minus, this cancels, cancel with that, there is a one and there is, and there is n omega n. This for the first part, okay? This concerns just the first part, okay? And, and also we have to remember that I have also this constraint, okay? So I have just computed the gradient, the, the normal derivative of this part for the moment, okay? Okay? Now I have to compute uh, uh, the other part. Okay, now the angle between x star and y, so now I need to do the same computation. The, 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 the derivative is with respect to y. So the same computation gives, and the angle is also the same between x star and y. Huh? It's always gamma because I want to differentiate this. So with the same computation, finally I have the following result the following result that is uh, dg over d nu remember the constant is nothing else is nothing else mi minus 1 over n omega n 1 over n omega n, and then I have here, what do I have? I have y minus x divided by x minus y to the n plus minus r x n minus 2. y minus x star divided by x star minus y to the n y equal r. So let me check if this is correct. Eh? Let me check if this is correct because otherwise we cannot continue. Okay, okay. This is R because uh, let let me just let me just substitute R. Uh, huh? No, it's the norm of y, which is r, OK? It's the, just the norm of y, which is r. Oh, yes. Just, yes. Uh, OK, it seems to me that this should be OK. OK. So now, now I want to rewrite this. So this seems to be correct. So for the moment, it seems to be correct. So uh, now I want. To, uh, 
to, to avoid, I want to, to use something which depends only on x and y, but not on x star. So no, I, now I have to remember that I have this condition and also the other condition that which unfortunately I have erased, um, which uh, lies the, this, this, diff, this norm with the norm of x minus y. Could you please? R so r over? Okay, so we have this. So now let me try to substitute. So here, this, huh? and here, this. So the second one gives me x star minus y equal r x minus y divided by x. Okay, so what is this? This is equal to minus one over n omega n. And what do we have? This I keep it as it is, x, um, uh, okay, x minus y to the n minus r over x to the n minus two. Then I have r minus uh, r square divided by x divided by x minus y to the n and then I have also r to the n here and then finally I have also x to the n Okay, so let us try to simplify a little bit. N omega n, x minus y to the n. Then I have r minus x cos gamma. I hope that this cos gamma at the end will cancel. So then I have this, then I have, what do we have? I have minus, I have r square due to this against this. Then I have x square due to this against this. And then the, the rest remains r minus r square over x. OK, so from this, I, what I see, I see. So let me write just this part. So this is equal to what? It is equal to x square divided by r minus x okay do you agree please check this So this minus cancels with this plus. And therefore, I end up with this expression, which I rewrite as follows. Uh, minus 1 over n omega n 
are x on its right to the n. Okay. Yes, it seems to be okay. Okay, so this is just a computation concerning this quantity here. So our candidate actually is a little bit more transparent, therefore u of x is equal to minus, is equal to minus r square minus x square divided by n omega n r. Let me check this r. Yes, it is okay. Divided by r. And then I have the integral over the boundary of BR, G of Y divided by X minus Y to the N. There is a mistake. Ah, minus and minus a plus. Okay, so I have to check. Uh, yes. Okay, this is the candidate. This is, a f this is a famous formula. It's called Poisson. Poisson. Okay. Okay. Now, again, we don't have proven yet that this is a solution. This is just the candidate of, of, of our solution. But it is a little bit more transparent than before. Okay, so now I don't need finally. No, no, this is, x is inside, omega is open, so x is inside the ball, and y is on the boundary. Therefore, this, this actually is never zero. And this shows also that u actually is very smooth inside, because this is smooth. So u actually is C infinity inside, in the interior. Yes, indeed, it's very important to realize that, of course, x is inside and y is on the boundary. Okay. So they, are never co they never coincide. Okay, so u is infinity, uh, is infinity on vr. Okay. So now, what do we have to show? Well, there are essentially two things to show. One thing is to show that this is harmonic. And the other thing, so we have to show two things. One, uh, 
And the other is that for any x bar now on the boundary of omega, the limit as x converges So once we have shown these two things, uh, we have solved our, uh, our problem. Namely, we have solved minus Laplace of u equal to 0 inside, and u equal g on the boundary. g is continuous. Eh? Therefore, we still have to check these two, uh, these two points. Once we have this, then we know that this is the solution. Okay. Okay, so what do we have to do? Let's try to compute the Laplacian with, with respect to x. Now, I have to take the Laplacian of this with respect to x, OK? So I have to show that the Laplacian of this with respect to x, if I show this, if I show this, the function will be harmonic in the ball. So you see. You can produce a lot of harmonic functions on in the ball. And also you can, so this is called also the harmonic extension of G. So G is given just on the boundary. And you extend it inside in an harmonic way, which is non-trivial at all, far from being trivial. So, and this is the, the extension. So now what remains to show is this and then this. Okay. Okay, so let us try to compute this. D over dxi of this. Again, I have to go very sm slowly because there is always the risk of make mistakes. So now, the derivative with respect to xi of this is equal to minus 2 xi divided by x minus 1, x minus y to the power n. And then what do we have? I have plus. And then the derivative of this with respect to x. Huh? So it is n. Then I have x minus y to the n plus 1. And then I have the derivative uh, of x minus y. Okay? Which is equal to minus 2 xi divided minus. Then what is this? So this is equal n r square minus x square divided by x minus y n plus 2 times uh, xi, I think. Hmm? Do you agree? So I, I say that uh, the derivative of this is just equal to xi divided. Huh? Uh, 
Okay, so let me check if I'm making mistakes. Uh, XI. Okay. Okay. Just maybe, maybe this is incorrect. Because let me let me write it explicitly. This is the derivative of the sum x1 minus y1 square plus xn minus y1 square. And so, sorry, there is uh, x minus y1. Okay. Now take. The derivative with respect to xj, the derivative with respect to xi of now r square minus x square divided by x minus y to the power n. So what do I find? So I have to differentiate with respect to xj this quantity, this. So let us try not to make too many mistakes. So this is equal to minus 2 identity ij divided by x minus y to the n. And then I have minus n with x minus y to the n plus 1 times the derivative with respect to xj huh, of the norm. So I have xj minus yj. Hmm? And then I have minus and plus, actually, because this minus against this minus. So I have plus n 2n xj divided by x minus y to the n plus 2 multiplied by x, y, 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 y. So this is the derivative of this. Huh? OK. Then minus n r minus x squared divided by x minus y to the n plus 2. Then I have to differentiate that with respect to xj. So I have ij. And then I have plus n times n plus 2 r minus x square times xi minus yy divided by x minus y. I think this should be n plus 4. And then here there is xj minus yj. OK. So first mistake, 
is that this is a plus because I have a minus here. Okay. Then other mistakes and uh, n n plus two is a n x j x y y. Okay. Apparently there is. In my notes here, there is an, S, an n plus 2 here. Correct, this is an n plus 2. Why n plus 1? n plus 2. This is a 2. OK. So this is an expression of the action of the function. And so what do we have to do is now to take the trace. Let us see what happens. So take the trace. Okay. So the mistakes were here a plus and here a two instead of one. Okay. Okay. So now, therefore, the Laplacian of u at the point x is equal to, where, where is it, r square? One, two, three, four, there is? Ah, thank you, yes, of course, is r square, yes. OK, take the trace of this matrix. Huh? So now we have minus 2n divided by x minus y to the n. Hmm? Now here there should be also, where is the i here? There cannot be only j. There should be also i. So. Uh, there should be also i there. So it was the derivative of this. Ah, uh, I have forgotten to rewrite maybe this 2xi, right? Because there is a 2xi. Huh? Check. OK. Now I have to sum over i equal to j here, i equal to j everywhere. So this is n. Then I have plus x minus y to the n plus 2. Then there is 2nx squared, which is this against this, and then minus 2n scalar product between x and y. And this for what concerns just only this part. Then I have plus 2n, again, x squared minus 2n xy divided by x minus y to the n plus 2. Plus, everything has a plus. Plus, plus. OK, minus n square, r square minus x square divided by x minus y to the n plus. And n plus 2, 
n, n plus 2, n plus 2, n plus 2, n plus 4 plus check because so ah, this is the norm square which cancels with two of these. So this is n plus two times n r square minus r square divided by n plus two. Correct? And n plus two. This is okay. This seems to be okay. 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 So this apparently has a different power, so I have to isolate by itself. So this is equal to minus 2n divided by x minus y to the n remains alone. Then I can put plus 1 over x minus y to the n plus 2. Parenthesis. So these are equal, but unfortunately with the plus. So 4n x squared minus 4n x y. Then I have minus n squared l squared plus n square x square plus n square r square minus n square x square plus 2n r square minus 2n x squared. So there is a cancellation here. There is a cancellation here. So this is equal to minus 2n divided by x minus y to the n plus 1 over x minus y to the n plus 2 multiplied then. What, what, what do we have? 4n minus 2n is equal to 2n x squared. 2n x squared. So maybe also the n goes here. So x squared minus 2 xy plus x squared. So And we want this equal to zero. Meaning that uh, this is equal to zero if uh, minus x minus y square plus
if this is equal to 0, then also this is equal to 0. OK? And this is fortunately seems to be 0 because this is equal to minus x squared minus y squared plus 2xy. Therefore, this cancels with this, this cancels with this, and we are on the boundary of the ball. And therefore, this cancels. So this is harmonic. Do you agree? OK, so uh, this is harmonic. So we have checked the first point. So now we have to check the second point. Now, this argument is similar to an argument that we made for the heat equation. So if, can I erase? So as you, as, you, uh, as you can see, for the moment, concerning the PDE part, we have never considered the problem of existence, essentially. Just uh, representation, but not existence. Why? Because for the existence theory, we need weak solutions. We need Sobolev spaces. We need tools that, for the moment, we have not yet studied. So the idea of the course is that today we'll conclude the first part on PDEs. So no existence, just only representation or clever computations like this, I mean. And then we start with the PDE, with the functional analysis part, which is more abstract, gives us the notion of Sobolev space. And if there will be time enough, then we will go back to the existence of solutions to be these using Sobolev spaces, OK? This is the, the idea. So today we conclude with this. So now, uh, maybe it is better that I leave you as an exercise, but I have to give you an, a, a hint for proving that uh, now, as I told you, I mean, we have to show what remains is to show that uh, the solution u keep, keeps the boundary condition in the point y sense, OK? This means this, OK? Now, <clears throat> this sort of argument, because of the, the fact that there is a kernel here which is singular, is non trivial to show this. Huh? Remember that we have done similar computation for the heat equation. When we show that uh, if we take the convolution with the heat kernel of the initial condition, then the solution was keeping the initial condition. And that was, a, uh, that was an argument that's similar to this one. So how to show this? The hint is, if you, if you look at uh, what we did uh, for the heat equation, we were able to write, here there was the convolution with the heat kernel, and not with this, of course. <clears throat> and was an integral also, not, not, not a surface integral. But in any case, what we did in that case was to write g of y minus g of x bar. And why we, we could do so in that case was because the heat kernel is normalized to have integral equal to 1. 
in space. Hmm? And so, uh, in that case, we found the g of y minus g of x bar, and therefore, since g was continuous, then we could take epsilon, delta, and so on. But here, there is no g of x bar. So how can we do, how, how we can uh, uh, face this problem and, and write instead of this uh, g y minus g of x bar? Hmm? Well, the trick is the following. Um, you consider this formula with the function identically equal to 1. Okay? So you have uh, the following interesting formula, the following curious, say, formula. 1 is harmonic, right? So we can write n omega n r integral over br 1 divided by y to the n. The trick is to use this strange, uh, this strange equality. Now, instead of 1, you put a constant here. And the constant is g of x bar. And the constant now goes inside and outside the integral. Mm -hmm. OK. Therefore, if you want to consider the difference u of x minus u g of x bar, we have to consider the difference. We have to consider the difference u of x minus g of x bar. We have to consider the following. Now, fix epsilon positive. And there is delta such that for any y in dr, y minus x bar less than delta, g of y minus g of x bar is less than epsilon. So this suggests to split, so given epsilon, this suggests to split, to split this integral into two contributions. One contribution, huh? uh, so, so let me call I delta, so this, this is I delta, I mean this is x bar, on the boundary of the ball. Then I have all points. Uh, this, this is the ball of radius delta centered at x, x bar. And then I have all these points here. So all points y on the ball at distance less than delta. So let me call this i delta. And therefore, let me split the integral in i delta and outside i delta. Hmm? So this is equal to r squared minus x squared divided by n omega n r, the integral over i delta 
g of y minus g of x bar divided by x minus y to the power n plus r square minus x square divided by n omega n r e integral outside so the boundary minus i delta g of y minus g of x bar divided by x minus y to the end. Okay. Now, you see, <coughs> given epsilon, if y is in I delta, then we have this. Therefore, at least the first sum So at least the first sum can be bounded, estimated as follows. So let me call this I1. So this is, uh, this is uh, A and this is B. So estimate of A. less than epsilon hmm? because this is less than epsilon in, when y is the in i delta and then what remains is uh, r square minus x square uh, sorry minus x square divided by uh, n omega n r Uh, actually, okay, I delta, 1 dv divided by x minus to, to the n. Okay, this is less than or equal than the integral over the whole sphere. Hmm? And this is equal to 1 by the previous observation. 1 equal to, if I put 1 here. So this is equal to epsilon. <coughs> because this is equal to 1. Hence, we only have to estimate uh, B. So we have X bar. This was I delta. Then let me take a smaller ball, say delta over 2. OK. Now, x is in omega. x in br, sorry. And assume that x minus x bar is less than delta over 2. OK, so x is some here, some, somewhere here, x. And y now, however, concerning b, y is outside of i delta. So y is here. OK? You agree? y is here. Huh? 
Now you see why this, this is, should be small, given epsilon. Because, OK, this is now, I cannot use anything about g. g is continuous. I don't know if this is small or, or large. Just a constant, twice the infinity norm of g, OK? So for the moment, I forget g. So I have just to estimate r squared minus x squared. Uh, so also, this is a constant. So I have just to estimate this product. One over. Okay. I, I mean, if I if I estimate this product, then I'm okay because this this I throw it away. This difference because g is bounded. Okay, constant and infinity norm. So I have to show that this is small. If this is small, then everything is small. Why is this small? OK, when x is sufficiently close to x bar, say less than delta over 2, now x minus y is larger than delta over 2. Because I have this intermediate region, which gives me delta over 2. So x is here, y is outside, and therefore the difference is at least uh, x minus y is, is this. So uh, 1 over x minus y to the m is less than or equal than 2 over delta to the m, to the n, sorry, n, n. <clears throat> well, and hence, uh, this is controlled by this. And then why this is small? Well, because this is small. This, is con this uh, does not uh, blow up, but this is small because x is converging to x bar, and x bar has norm equal to r. So given epsilon, there exists delta huh? such that uh, if x minus x bar is less than delta over 2, then this product becomes smaller than epsilon over 2 or whatever. Okay? So this. This goes to 0. This goes to 0 as x converges to x. Okay, so <coughs> this I think concludes the. So you, you have seen this. This part is complicated. Harmonic functions. It's very huge. There are books of this size, only for harmonic functions and elliptic equations. So this is just the the, the beginning of the story. And I think that is the, you can find all these arguments in the book of Evans. I think more or less in different order. There you can find everything. Um, so this concludes the part on PDs. So we are about the half of the course, more or less. And so now there is no time to begin. But I just to, I, I would like to know what do you know about function analysis? Do you know what is a Hilbert space? So you already know what is a Hilbert space. And the Banach space, also, fine. Uh, and you have studied LP space, surely. OK. And so maybe, uh, of course, you don't know what is the uh, han banach theorem, the extension theorem. OK. So maybe. So next time, we will start with a quick uh, list of definitions, maybe on Hilbert and Banach spaces, but very quickly, because you already know. Have you already studied the spaces of sequences? Uh, the most important one, maybe, is this. Have you ever seen this space? 
So do you know it is complete? It is separable? Fine. No, you don't know. You don't know. Uh, but you know what is a Hilbert space and Banach space or not? This you know? Okay. So I would say maybe two words about this. We'll actually, this is very, very important because it's the, it's the typical Hilbert space. Typical separable Hilbert space. So it, it's, very, it's very, very complicated, this object here. Space of sequences in L2. So I will say maybe something about this, and then we will start with the Han Banach theorems uh, and linear functional analysis. Okay. <coughs> 